This video will talk about the announcements tool and how you can use the announcements tool to communicate information with students. So the first thing to check is to be sure you have the announcement widget on your homepage. If you're using one of the default homepages from Kirkwood, then you most likely will. Most instructors will have the announcements widget on your page, but if you don't see it there, you'll just need to go into your homepages uh, and edit your homepage to add the announcements widget. Now, um, in general, the announcements widget is one of the first things that students see when they log into the course. So it's a really great way to communicate information with students. Um, it's a great way to let them know if you've made updates to the course or just give them some reminders. Or um, other instructors will use announcements to uh, summarize a week or, or you know, remind students of what's to come for the next week. There's a lot of different uses for it, but it's just a great way to communicate. So we do strongly recommend posting weekly announcements, whether you have a face-to-face -face course or an online course or a hybrid course, because um, I think it really benefits all students. So a couple things to mention here on the homepage. Um, you'll see all the announcements for your course. There's three announcements here in this course, um, and I can come over here and I can click the X, and that will dismiss this from my view. One area of confusion is that many times instructors think if they click this X and it dismisses this, you'll see it disappears from your page, that it will disappear from student view too, and that's actually not true. The student has to go in and dismiss it from their page. So um, if you don't want an announcement to show for students anymore, you'll actually need to go into the announcement tool. And there are two ways to get there. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can go to announcements, click the arrow next to it, and click where it says go to announcements tool. Um, and the other way to do it is to click on where it says show all announcements. So we can click on, we'll just click on the show all announcements. And we'll see our ones here that have been dismissed, but they're just dismissed. They're not deleted. And you'll note here there's no end date on them. Um, and by default, when you do create an announcement, there is no end date. So you'll need to add one in or come in and decide when to delete it later. But if you don't do that, the announcement will stay up for student view uh, throughout the whole course. And announcements do copy over to the next semester's course as well. So students will see those old announcements. So if I do want to delete an old announcement, I can click on the, uh, the announcement. I can click on the box. I can just come up here and click delete. When I want to create a new announcement, I can do it here. And when we go back to the home page, I'll actually show you a couple other places you can do that too. So I'm going to click on where it says new announcement. And the first thing you need is a headline, which is just basically a title for the announcement. So we'll, we'll just call this one a welcome announcement. Welcome to my cat course. I'll write my message. It's always a great idea to have a welcome announcement, so it really is the first thing students see when they come into a course, um, when they first start a course. Even if you have a face-to-face -face course, it's a, it's a great way to still do that, because then you get make it students that actually log in before the first time they um, have actually have like class time with you, so they get really acclimated with the course. Um, best practices in a welcome announcement might be you know, introducing the course in a couple sentences um, and directing students to course content. So adding a little sentence about going to course content to get started and where to find the first assignment is a great best practice here. And then we come down here, we have availability. Again, it's always going to show a start date if you want it to, um, but it's not going to show an end date. So it's definitely recommended you put an end date in here. We'll just put it for um, you know, a week from today, which is the 14th, and 12 a.m. is fine. You can add an attachment here if you have a file. You can also add release conditions. Those are a little bit more advanced features, so I'm not going to go over those, but if you did want to restrict access to a certain group, you could do that this way. So I'm going to go ahead and publish that. I'm going to see it there on the top of my page, and if I go back now to my home page, I'll see it there right on top. It's always going to show the most recent um, announcement there at the very top. Now a couple other ways you can add an announcement. If you click on the arrow here, um, you'll get to go to announcements tool. You can also add a new announcement right here from the widget. Um, this also gives you the option to reorder the announcements. I wouldn't worry too much about the RSS and the notifications 
or customizing the widget either. So um, if we go back to the announcements tool, there's just a couple other features in here. Um, under your more actions menu, you do have that option again to reorder. And there is a restore function here too. So if you accidentally delete an announcement you didn't mean to delete, you can actually go in here and restore it. So that's a brief overview of the announcements tool. Like I said, another great way to communicate with students.